Hello and welcome to part two of the following eye tutorial. Now in this one, we're going to build a login form. We'll be taking the eye we built in part one, this eye here, and turning it into this. This will be the goal of our tutorial today. We'll be taking the eye that we built last time, placing it on top of a form and adding several cool new features. Now, obviously when you hover over the eye, it shuts, that's fine. We're all, we all remember that. But the other cool feature that we wanted to build is that when we went to the password section, that it would actually hide the eye, that the eye would close. So let's go and have a look at that now. If we click the password section, the eye closes. And if we click off the login form, it opens again. But not only that, we've added keyboard accessibility. So if we go to the email form here and tab down, the eye closes. And if we tab off, it goes. So every time you interact with this password input, either by tab or by mouse click, the eye shuts, which is brilliant. But there is one feature I haven't quite mentioned yet. Now, every time you hover over, the eye shuts. That's all well and good. But if you click it, the eye changes color. But not only that, it changes to a random color every time you do it. And adding little features like this are always really cool to any bit of UI that you build in the future. All these little hidden tricks are always fun if you're building a fun type of website. So let's go ahead and start building this. So we've got our eye from our previous tutorial. Now what we want to do is we want to add the HTML that we've added. So we want to add the login form. So let's add the markup for that now. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add the form and we want to say that it's going to submit and on submit, what we'll do is we'll return a JavaScript function and we simply write return and we'll call function submit form for anything that you want to do in the future. So if you want to do something with the form, you now have a JavaScript function to do so. So let's go down here. We also want to add a class. So let's add a class of login form. We want to make sure autocomplete is on. So it has auto completion on the form itself. And that should be it. Let's start adding some labels and inputs. So we want to add a label for the email. And in here, we'll just say label for email. And we'll put an input with uh, a type of email with a name of email so it connects to the label above. So now that I've added the name, the label and this input are connected. And we're just going to add a class of email as well. If we go down, and we'll do the same for password as well. So we'll change that to password, add password here, we'll put input type of password, and that will basically hide your, your content. And we'll add the name of password so it connects to the label, and we'll add a class of password as well. We also want a button because every form has a button. So we'll add a class of submit and we'll add a type of submit as well. So we're telling the form that this button is going to be the submit button. And we're just going to pop that in there here. We also want to add a lovely eye emoji just to emphasize that this is a following eye login form, as you can see here. With the HTML in, you can see it's looking pretty janky. So let's go sort out the styling now. Let's open up the CSS. So we don't want to be using CSS. We want to be using SAS. Let's go change the CSS preprocessor to SAS. And we'll just make sure that we change JavaScript as well to Babel so we can use the latest JavaScript. So let's start styling it up now. So what I want to do is get a new font and I'm going to go to Google Fonts and get Libre Baskerville. And if I simply just go here, select style, go to embed, go to import, and just copy and paste this, bring it back to the tutorial and right at the very top, I'll go and add that. That should import that font for us. And we can go see that if we add the font family here, if we go back to Google fonts and grab that and just simply add it here we can go test it. Now we've currently got it as position absolute, which isn't very useful for a login form. So what we'll do is we'll delete all of this to do with positioning it absolute. And in fact, we're going to position it relative and we're going to say top 200 pixels so it's just from the top and we are actually going to have a background of black and we want to add a max width of 300 pixels because we don't want the login form to be too wide and we want it to be placed in the center we also want to add a general border radius of about 30 pixels so all the borders are 
pretty rounded. I think that should be that. So if we go further down, we'll go and start tidying up the eye. I think what we want to do is just get rid of this margin because we're not going to need that anymore. And what we're going to say is we're going to add a height of 150 pixels and we're going to say margin top minus 30 pixels to make sure the eye kind of goes above it a bit. And let's just go further down and sort out the rest of the dimensions of the eye. So with that, and we also want to make the eye a bit bigger. So let's say 330 pixels large and we'll make it, we can get rid of this now since we've already added the height. So now we've got the eye there. Uh, it is a bit to the right. So let's just pull that back in a bit. So it should go this way. Oh, you can see what's happening here now. And there we go. And that's much more in the center now. So let's go sort out the eyelid itself. Cause if you can see, it's a little janky. So all we're simply saying is we're going to match the height at the top, which is 330 pixels. And we're going to match the height to be 150. So when we hover over, it should now look correct. And if compared to the first following eye, it was a lot smaller. So this is, this is matching all the animations now. So we've made the eye a lot bigger now, which should fit the form. Now, what we're going to do in a bit is we're going to add an active class to this uh, shut class in the spam. So just here, we'll add an active class and we'll make sure that that adds a height of 100% when an active class is added to the eyelid. Because we want to basically, with JavaScript, just toggle the eyelid on and off. And uh, with this active class, we'll be able to do that. Similar to what this is doing here, but we'll be doing JavaScript. We'll be using JavaScript to activate that. Now, what we'll be doing, so now we're going to add all the new styling for the login form. So if we take the login form and we add display flex, and what we want to do is just start styling these uh, columns together or we'll basically start styling these inputs together so they start to look like an input form um, we'll add a max width of 300 pixels make sure it is centered and we'll make sure that we add a color of white for the, the labels and the text now as well as that we want to add the correct spaces so we want to say on the top of the first label that it has a margin of top so that it just comes down a bit. Forgot to add a space here. All right, that should work. And then that's added some better spacing there. Now let's go ahead and start styling these inputs. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add the correct margin. So we're going to style all sides of the input. So we're gonna have the top being zero, the right being 30 pixels, the bottom being 10 pixels, and the left-hand side being 30 pixels. Then we also want to add a border of, we want to make sure that we add a transparent border because we don't want anything on here. Obviously, when you go through this, you can add a border if you want. And then what we want to do is we want to add border radius. Now, this is a cool trick you can do. If you don't want to actually have a color to your border, but you do want the curved border look, you can always just add a transparent color to your border and then just add a radius afterwards and you can get this effect. Now we want to make sure that we have the right font family when we're typing inside it. And we want to have a font size of 14 pixels and a padding of five pixels. What we'll do for the password uh, input at the bottom, we're just gonna add a margin bottom to it of about 30 pixels, just so it matches the first label above. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll style the submit button. So we're going to add some padding to that, a border of orange. We're going to add a board radius of five pixels, background color of orange. And we're also going to add a border radius. We're going to add a background color of orange. And then we're going to add some border radius to the bottom right and bottom left. We also want to make sure that we get the pointer cursor whenever we hover over it. And let's just add some of the final touches. So we're gonna add a font size of 25 pixels, a font weight of bold. And again, we're going to 
use the same font we've used before. We're going to use Libre Baskerville, if that's how you say it. We'll also say when you hover over it, we'll just change the color. And we'll use a SAS function to just basically lighten it a bit. So we'll say when we, we're going to lighten the orange by 20%, if we hover over it, we should now get this nice light effect. And that's it. I think that's the styling side of it done. So we've got this new input form uh, with our new submit button and the eye following us around still. Brilliant. Obviously, you can style it differently if you want to add some outlines. If you want to change the styling of this, go ahead. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And now for the main event, we're going to add the JavaScript that's going to basically make everything happen. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just rename this to eyeball. So we have it use a capital B just so that um, it's in line with all the other constants that we're going to use. And the other one is the login form. We also want to make sure that we've got the password input. We also want to make sure we also want to make sure that we've got the eyelid, which is what dictates it opening and closing. And we also want the email input, which I'll place up here next to password. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to listen out for the clicks because we're going to sort out all the click events first and we're going to sort out clicking onto the password. So to do that, we need to listen out for all clicks on the window. So we'll add, um, we'll do a function here. So what we want to do is we want to check if the password input contains the right target. And then if it does, we want to add the active class. And if it doesn't, what we'll say is we'll just remove the active class. Oops, we've turned it into an array. Okay, so now if we go back to the submit form, ah, so we've added one too many of these, so we'll just remove that. Save that, let's go try it out. Oh, we've added one too many brackets as well. So let's add that back. And if we click the password, the eye shuts. And we click off it and it goes. Very simple. So now that we've got a toggle for the eyelid, let's add it by tab as well. So, so now that we've got the eyelid toggling by the click, let's do it by the keyboard as well. So we'll start with the email input. We want to add another event listener, but this time we want to do it for the key down event instead of the click event. We want to tap into the event of the key down specifically on the email input. So what we'll say is if we use the key code of nine, which is the tab key code, we will basically do what we did above and we'll add the active class and that's it. So we're just checking for that and just making sure that it's got a callback of false as always. So now if we go to the email input and tab down, you can see that the eyelid closes, but if we tab off it, you can see that it stays shut, which is not ideal. So what we want to do now is we want to add a way that it basically undoes itself. So when you go off that, it should sort itself out. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add another event listener on the uh, password input with the key down event, similar to the one above. And we're going to be listening for the key code of tab, which is nine. What we're saying is that we're just going to remove the class. If that's the case, we're also going to add a callback of false. And just quickly, what we'll do is we'll add the submit form function as well. So, and we're just going to prevent the default for now, but you can do whatever you want with it. So we'll start to tidy up the code now and just reformat it just so we make it as uh, clean as can be really. So we want to say that this is going to close the eye, this event listener, and we'll say this event listener down here is going to open it. So let's just go make sure that that works. So if we go to email and we tab down to password, the eye closes. And then if we tab off it, the password input should listen for the tab and open again. And if we repeat, it carries on doing it. And if we left click on it, it closes. And if we left click off, it opens. Brilliant. Now, one quick thing before we randomize the eye color is we can see that we're using if statements here. Now we can tidy this up with ternary statements and it's as simple as doing this really. So all we do is we get rid of this, remove the other brackets here. And we'll just say we're not returning anything. And that's it. And we'll do the same here. Now, here you get to actually see it in motion where we do have an else statement. So what do we do? So if we delete all of that, including the else, it's starting to look a lot cleaner. And it should still work the same. 
So if we go to email, tab down. Uh, so we just forgot to add some of these. Right, so let's go make sure this all works. So if we tab down, go to password, tab off, it closes. If we use the left mouse click and left click off, it's all working great. Now the last piece of this login form is the random colorizer for the eye. Let's go add that now. So in the original event listener up here, if we just go down and we say we're going to randomize the color, let's add a random color. And what we're simply saying is that we're just going to randomize the color and we're going to bring it to a string and it should give us a color to use. So we'll say, if the event happens within the eyelid or the target was in the eyelid that we want this to change and we want to style the border color of this eyeball. So we do that by using the border color property on style and we'll say it's equal to our variable random color, which we've got there, which is randomizing our hex color. And because it is randomizing a hex color, we need to make sure we add a pound sign or a hashtag. And that should add our hex color to this border color of eyeball, which will be our eyeball. So now if we click on this, so we forgot to finish the ternary statement because there's no else statement. We need to make sure that it just returns as nothing. We don't want anything uh, to return other than that in the chat. So now if we click the eye, it should change on every click which is perfect. So we've got the eye changer, the secret eye changer feature, the tab which hides the password from the eye. We tab off it and then you can see it again. Now there's all kinds of other features you could do. You could say every time the eye closes, when you tab onto it, it triggers the eye changer. Or you could add some more styling for here. You could add some animations for submit. You could have the eye close here. You could have that change to that emoji to a different emoji. There's a whole host of other things you could do. So I'd highly recommend to check the description, get this example and have a play around or just try and code your own from scratch. But if you do build it, it is a powerful thing to have in your portfolio and it's quite fun. It shows employees that you know, you're quite into the fun side of front end and you're quite into the UI side of it. So if you found that useful, please do make sure to like and subscribe and support the channel and stay tuned for any cool future tutorials that might be coming your way. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.